This video looks at the properties of air and their role in the principles of flight. We've got a number of activities and demonstrations showing that air takes space, it has a mass, it expands, and that it exerts a force when compressed, so that is pressure. Use these activities as lesson starters or different student centers, projects or experiments in your classroom, uh, and have fun with them. Let's take a look. One great way at examining how air takes space is to use an aquarium or a large Tupperware container full of water, maybe a bowl, and a couple of glasses as well. So the idea here is we're going to try to pour air from one cup to the other. I mean, students in your classroom might be able to, uh, to pour water from one cup to the other, but they might think it was a little bit strange to think that you might pour air from one cup to the other. But in fact, you can do that quite easily by using an aquarium as well. So one, one glass has a little bit more water than the next, and the one with the air under, you just pour under that glass, and it just fills right up, and it pushes the water right out of the glass. I want to play around with that. It's a pretty neat notion. The other thing you can do is you can take a dry piece of paper towel and stuff it at the bottom of the glass. Make sure it's drying in there a little bit. And you're going to take it, you're going to turn it upside down, and you're going to put it right in the bowl, the Tupperware container, whatever it is that you have full of water. And so you want to ask the students whether that paper is going to be wet or dry when you take it out. And they'll find out that it is dry, and that's because air takes space. And it's in there, the water won't go in as long as the air is there, and so it keeps that paper towel nice and dry. A great activity that demonstrates that air takes space, and also to give an effective introduction to pressure, is to use a two liter plastic bottle. You take a balloon, you stuff it inside, and you wrap the mouth of the balloon around the mouth of the bottle. You can ask and challenge your students to try to inflate this balloon, and they won't be able to, because it's sealed inside, and the pressure, the air that is inside this bottle, won't allow this balloon to inflate. Now if you take another one and you puncture a hole somewhere in the, balloon, in the uh, plastic container, like I have right here, you try to blow that balloon up again, leaving that hole open. You'll see, and if you blow a little bit harder, or a few more times, that the balloon will inflate within the container. This hole, because we have a hole now, the air has a place to escape while the balloon is inflating. But if you let go of the hole, the balloon will deflate because the air is all coming back into the container. Another neat characteristic of this particular activity is that once you have your balloon inflated, take a look, the opening has no knot in your balloon. And you can see straight into it. I bet you your students wouldn't have thought that was possible to be able to inflate a balloon and not tie it closed, leaving it inflated. Pretty. Another activity that looks at air pressure uses a candle, a pie plate, and some colored water. So what you're going to do is you're going to light the candle, you're going to put the bottle on top of the candle so that the mouth of the bottle is within the water, it's covered by the water. What's going to happen is gradually that flame is going to go out, which your students might be able to predict, but that water is going to get sucked up into the bottle. We wonder why that is. Well, it has to do with pressure. Two main reasons. The first reason is that the flame burns all the oxygen in the air within the bottle. And once that's finished and the uh, uh, flame goes out, the pressure on the outside of the bottle is greater than the pressure on the inside, pushing some of that water inside of the bottle. The second reason is that that flame heats the air within the bottle, expanding it. Once that flame goes out, it cools and it sucks that water inside. We know that air takes space, it has mass, and that it exerts or applies pressure. Now we don't feel that pressure just because we're pretty used to the air being around us and it's constantly uh, applying that pressure to us. Although this is a neat experiment to show us how strong air pressure really is. 
In this uh, pop can here, this aluminum can, we have a little bit of water at the bottom, about five milliliters above the bottom, and we have, of course, naturally air inside the bottle. As it is boiling, based on, on the hot plate right now, uh, it's producing water vapor, which is filling the bottle, or the can, I should say, and it's pushing the air out. And as it pushes the air out, it is filling that full chamber with water vapor. So what we want to find out is what happens when we put this can upside down in that vat full of water. Let's see. Ready? Whew. The can is crushed. And that's because what happens is the water vapor condenses very quickly as it touches the cold water and it turns into liquid. And the liquid takes a lot less space because the molecules are, are closer together within the liquid than the gas. And the air pressure on the outside just pushes, implodes the can. It pushes the walls of the can right in. So that's what we just saw. Another property of air is that when it's heated, it rises. And we can see evidence of this with some simple tools, such as uh, a spinner here that we can create out of some Bristol board that we've cut here at a 20 centimeter diameter, some eight slits into it that we've tilted just a little bit in the same direction as you can see here. And what we do with that is when we put it at the top of a heat source here, it will begin to spin as a result of the hot air rising. Now we're using a toaster here. We want to create a safe zone around the toaster because it can get quite hot. Uh, something else that would work equally well would be um, a heat lamp or, or a heat source of that kind. Now you can create other types of spinners as well that will work effectively. Uh, it's up to you. Hot air balloons work on this very principle and we can see that quite clearly if we have a plastic bag and a heat source at our disposal. If you take the plastic bag and set it just above your heat source without touching it because we don't want it to melt, it will fill up with hot air and when it has enough it will begin to rise. It will go almost up to the ceiling and will generally float its way back down. Now you might need to guide it a little bit when it starts. It can be quite impressive to see though. You might use a larger bag as well and that can be quite impressive also once it fills up with air and floats up to the ceiling. It might take a little bit longer for that. Now the principle at work essentially is that when the air heats up the molecules begin to move faster and further apart, creating less uh, a density in that air compared to the air that's surrounding it. And when it's hot enough and uh, when there's enough of it, it can lift up objects along with it when it rises. So we've looked at many of the properties of air, but now let's answer one of the crucial questions within the flight unit, and that is how do airplanes fly? Well, essentially, it's a tug of war between the four main forces acting on an airplane or an aircraft. That is the lift force, that's the force that allows an airplane to take off, the force of gravity, which pulls anything with a mass down to the earth, the thrust force, which is what propels an aircraft forward, and the drag force, which is what pulls it back as a result usually of air friction. Now once you've covered that with your students, you're likely to spend a little bit more time uh, on the lift force and how uh, lift is created. You can create uh, a good demonstration using uh, an airfoil that you can put together with your students using a sheet of paper. You fold in two and you recess the top part back uh, about a centimeter and a half and then you can tape it, that creates that curved surface over the top. And then you can talk about that with your students. Now a diagram that I've put up here demonstrates that if the air is coming here to the front of the airfoil, it has two directions it can take. It can either go over the airfoil, the longer surface here that's over the top, or the flatter and straighter surface on the bottom. Now if they start at the front at the same time, they achieve the end at the same time as well. Now, the thing is though, that this top particle has to go faster because he's traveling on a longer trajectory to get to the end at the same time as the bottom one. That creates an area of low pressure on the top as compared to the higher pressure on the bottom with the slower moving particle. And that propels this, this airfoil up into the air. And that principle is called Bernoulli's principle. We're gonna look at a few activities that demonstrate this 
uh, right now. A simple way of examining Bernoulli's principle with your students is to cut a sheet of paper lengthwise in two and have your students put that sheet of paper to their bottom lip and blow across it. See what happens and they can maybe predict what's going to happen and observe, write it down. Essentially as they blow across, that faster air creates an area of low pressure and it lifts that paper up the same as an airfoil would. Using a funnel and a ping pong ball, you can look at the same principle by challenging your students to blow the ping pong ball out of the funnel. And no matter how hard they try, they won't be able to. That's because the same principle is at work. The fast moving air creates a zone of low pressure which keeps the ping pong ball inside of the funnel. You can also do the inverse by asking them to see if they uh, can keep the ping pong ball inside the funnel upside down. Let them try it and see. Another simple activity that demonstrates this principle uses two balls suspended by some string. I've attached it to a meter stick up here. You can challenge your students to try to separate these balls by blowing between them. See what happens. Basically when they blow between them it'll pull the two together as a result of that fast moving air creating an area of low pressure. An impressive way to demonstrate Bernoulli's principle uses the blower function on a shop vac here. Uh, usually a vacuum that's a little bit more powerful such as this works a little bit better. And a few different types of balls and you're going to make them float outside of the nozzle. Once you do this you ask your students what's happening here? How is Bernoulli's principle allowing this to work? The ball is floating because the fast moving air coming out of the nozzle is creating an area of low pressure. All the still air around is still of high pressure and they're keeping that ball pegged right in the middle because it can't go anywhere and that's why it floats. One activity to explore some of the ideas that you've introduced in the flight unit is to have your students create some paper airplanes. Now there are many different designs that you can go with. You can find these in books, online, and even appended to this video. Uh, the idea here is essentially though to investigate the principles that you've introduced and how to best create an airplane that, uh, that, that flies uh, in certain conditions that you might create, so for length or for height. Or, or something of that sort. Turn your classroom into a laboratory here where they can create and design, decorate their planes. The hallway might turn into a test facility where you can send partners out to test the performance of their planes and make notes, come back into the classroom, and they can make all those changes that they might, uh, they might feel are needed. Now those changes might be related to flaps to help steer the plane, or to create better lift, or go straighter, or maybe a rudder on the back end, or maybe putting a paper clip to weight down the front of the plane. The sky's the limit here. It should be an exciting activity for both you and your students. In this video, we looked at different activities and demonstrations showcasing the properties of air. That it takes space, it has mass, it expands, and that it exerts a force when compressed. And that these ideas are key when understanding the principles of flight. So hopefully we've helped you with a little bit of your planning uh, for this unit. So have fun with your students, and we'll see you in the next video.